Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Candid Convos. Today's guest is Nadine Heights. She is the owner of Heights Immigration Law, and I'm very excited to have her with us today. Uh, she has a very interesting story as well, so I let, I'll let you hear all about her from her. So, Nadine, thank you for joining us. I'm excited to talk with you. And uh, as you said, my law firm is Heights Immigration Law. I am here in sunny South Florida, where I live, and excited to talk to you today. Well, thank you for joining us again. And if I'm not mistaken, like, like, well, of course, I did a little research on you. I know that you moved all the way from Canada to live in the States. So um, do you still visit back uh, Canada at some point or are you now Florida based? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, a very big city. And uh, my family and I, we came here in, I think, 2005. So we've been here a long time now and we are dual citizens, all of us. So we have still been able to maintain our Canadian citizenship and we now have U.S. citizenship as well. So we kind of have the best of both, right? We can easily travel anywhere. And yeah, definitely I still have family in Canada. I'm actually going there uh, soon for a vacation. So we do look forward to going back to Toronto and visiting our family, definitely. Oh, that's very nice. You know, guys, I mentioned this because before you came to the States, you were not a lawyer, right? You became a lawyer. No, I became a lawyer in the United States, right? I never thought I would be interested in a career in law, I actually had a totally different career in Canada. Um, like I said, I grew up in Toronto. Uh, I married my husband in Toronto. I, we, you know, my kids are all born in Toronto. And I was actually a, in marketing, uh, specifically retail for a major Toronto and Canadian actually uh, department store. So I was a retail uh, marketing manager for many, many years in advertising, um, in the head office for a chain of department stores called Eaton's. I don't know if anyone knows that, but, you know, it's kind of like a, like a Macy's, right, for people in the United States. Um, they don't exist anymore, Eaton's. They kind of went, uh, you know, the way of the dinosaur as much of these retail department stores went, right? They're just you know, the internet and online shopping and everything. So um, yeah, I came to the United States on a um, work visa to actually manage an immigration law firm because they were looking for someone who had uh, marketing and advertising experience. They didn't hire me to manage their firm because I knew anything about the law. <laughs> I knew nothing about immigration law at that time. So yeah. So that's kind of how I fell into immigration law. And I really grew to enjoy the field of immigration law while I was here on this work visa managing this immigration law firm. And I decided to go to law school and become an immigration lawyer. So I did it all in the United States. Wow. So what was it that, that made you want to do the to, to do that switch it was your experience working at immigration or the or, or the i don't know i, I think you might have uh, worked on a lot of cases where you made a lot of people happy so maybe right you... definitely yeah i think um you know i i'm also a, a kind of an entrepreneur at heart before coming to the united states i had um actually uh launched a business in canada doing some consulting, you know, marketing and, and advertising consulting for other companies. And um, even throughout law school here, I had some uh, side businesses. That's something that's uh, like, we had that in common in different countries as well. You know, I'm a lawyer in Mexico and it's the exact same thing. You go to law school, you learn the different practice areas that, there, that, that, that exist, but you have no idea how to hang, handle a business. Right. So, Let's say, let's run a, a, a hypothetical. If you were able to create a course, which I'm thinking by now you probably already have it because of your group and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you were able to influence uh, law schools around the country, let's say both in the United States and Canada, and you were able to teach one subject, what would you name that subject? Um, what would I 
name it is a really good question. I mean, the uh, the business of running a law firm, maybe I mean, something to that effect, because there is so much you have to learn about, right? You have to learn about how to manage your, your budgets. You have to learn about human resources. You have to learn about, um, you know, the all of the things that go into the day-to-day -day running, uh, the staffing and the technology, especially nowadays, is a huge part of it. So the coaching that I do focuses more on the technology where I recommend to other lawyers systems that they can use. I look at what they're already doing and recommend improvements, um, things like you know what I'm doing by hiring a virtual assistant, right? That's becoming a huge trend, uh, especially with lawyers that are just a single lawyer law firm. Instead of hiring physical staff, you can grow your business with virtual staff. So that is becoming a huge, a huge uh, thing now. But the systems we use, the technology, the apps, or, you know, we can use those systems and it allows us not to even need that many physical staff. Right. So that's really what I've been focusing on, because I just enjoy project management. I think that's, you know, maybe uh, that's what the course would be project management for a law firm. <laughs> so and now I have an idea of all of the different topics that you would teach inside that. So let me focus on, on, on the virtual and then the, the virtual assistant aspects of this, because. I've also noticed that there's this trend that not necessarily all lawyers are following because there's also that big dream of I want to work with big law or I want to run my firm and have uh, first year associates, second year associates, you know, like having it uh, pretty much every step of the way. But now it's like there's this new wave of lawyers that is just growing when they can handle most of it, everything via their computer. Everything is virtual. Everything is remote. Yeah software for everything task management for everything everything you can pretty much hang up your shingle yeah and, and you can live the... anywhere right yeah so what's your take on that yeah i think it's wonderful i mean you know we are now at the age and i think covid really was a wake-up call for many of us that didn't already have systems developed right so there were lawyers pre-COVID that never would have thought of having a virtual consultation with someone on Zoom, a client, right? Everything was in office, come to my office, come to my office, right? To meet the, the lawyer. And then COVID hit and many of us realized that, wow, we don't want people coming to our office now. How can we still run our firm, right? So there's that aspect of the client interaction that is virtual that also allows us as lawyers to be in another country if we wanted to be right or to you know go and live somewhere somewhere like I literally could live in Canada for several months out of the year that's my goal for the future is that I want to spend more time in Canada I could still run my U.S. business from Canada I'm a Canadian citizen so I could do that um, you know and I wouldn't have to give up anything because I have a team of staff some are in the office, some are virtual. To me, I like the hybrid uh, situation of having, uh, I still like a physical office for, you know, um, seeing the, the clients that do need to see you physically in your office locally. But many of my clients are in other states. And with immigration, some of my clients are in other countries, right? So uh, they could physically visit me even if they wanted to. So uh, there's always a need to really have good systems in place whether it's document collection, right? How do you get your documents from your clients if they can't walk into your office and bring them to you? Well, there's methods that, and I go over this with other lawyers, there's apps and there's software that you can use to help your client upload documents uh, safely and you know securely, right? That's a big thing too, securing uh, securely sending sensitive documents like you don't want your client to email you documents that are sensitive like tax returns because email is not that secure so we have other technology methods that can allow the client to upload them safely getting all the, the information from the client like all their address history all their family names and their children and their mother and like we need so much information from your client right 
The old way was your client would come to your office, fill out a paper questionnaire and handwrite everything. And then you would take that and transcribe it into the forms. Like, no, now we have online questionnaires that the client gets. They put all their info in and they can do it right from their phone. Like your clients, even though your clients may be undocumented or whatever, they all have a cell phone nowadays. That's their lifeline. They may not have a computer, that's okay. But as long as they have this, they can get their email, they can do their questionnaire, they can do everything online. And then you have everything in your system and it's easier for you to create the forms because now you have their data entered directly from them. So these are improvements that we've made um, in all areas of law, but specifically immigration law because we are so forms heavy, right? We have lots of paperwork. So it's really something that has really, I think uh, COVID really taught us that we have a, a huge need to improve our systems and our technology. You know, you just said something that is not only very true, but also brilliant and in a different aspect because I've never, I, I never saw it this way. I know that the pandemic was like sort of like a game changer for a lot of people. It mm -hmm. made you or it broke, or it, it made or break you. So, yeah. but it's not only for lawyers. Now that I'm thinking about this, because I know that probably you have some of your staff doing this, whether they're virtual assistants or not, walking your client through your portal. So yeah, then, absolutely. And what you were just saying, it suddenly hit me. It's not only the lawyer becoming proficient at using all of these systems, but also including the client as much as possible for them to become savvy. Yes, under, that is huge. Power. And you know what? It starts in the beginning because here's the biggest issue or the biggest, um, you know, uh, resistance I get from other immigration lawyers. I say to them, okay, use all these wonderful systems with your client. And the first thing they say to me, but my clients are not tech savvy. Oh, I hear that all the time, right? Okay, I get it. But you can train or teach your client to be tech savvy by showing them, just like you said, have your virtual assistant, get on a Zoom call or get on the phone or whatever it takes um, to show your client how to use your system. Create a video yourself. Like I have little one minute, two minute videos. We send them to clients. They click on it and they see, oh, this is how I'm going to use Nadine's questionnaire. I'm going to answer it. I can answer the questions on my phone. So make it easier for your client to be tech savvy. Show them how to scan documents, right? Like nowadays, you can get a free app for your phone to scan documents now. The virtual assistant that you have from offshore, um, how did you manage or did you manage? Because I'm assuming I shouldn't assume, but I have an idea. Uh, were you able to build a relationship with that virtual assistant? And if so, how did you did it? Because Yeah, that's a really good question because, you know, one of the things you really want that assistant to feel like they're a part of your team, right? So I think it's what we do is we have Zoom meetings every week with our whole team and we include the virtual assistant. Um, you know, so she feels like she's really a part of our team. We're constantly in communication with her through um, Slack, whether it's messaging through Slack or, uh, you know, my legal assistant, he's on the phone with her frequently uh, through our phone service. And, um, you know, what I often do is I create little videos sometimes for her. Like if I want to explain how to do something, I think it's sometimes easier if you can record a video of yourself doing it. So I use Loom and we do a little Loom video that I'll send to my virtual assistant. I have a section online um, where I have all our training videos. So I have lots of training videos that I've created for my law firm on how to use our systems so that I can just tell her, you know, go to this training video. And it's, it's wonderful. So she really, I have her on my website, you know, so she really feels like she's a part of our team. She's not, you know, an outsider, so to speak. And I actually have a second virtual assistant that is starting with me on Monday from uh, Get Staffed Up. So that's really exciting. And what I'm able to do now is have the, the first virtual assistant who's been with me almost a year train the second one. <laughs> so it's going to be a much easier process to get the second one ready. So I really like the idea of having a, a number of virtual staff 
mixed with a number of office staff. I like that idea. Yes. How do you envision the future of remote working? Um, I envision it as just becoming more integral and almost a necessary part of building your team because it's, you know, it's very cost effective, um, especially for, for lawyers. Um, technology allows us to have virtual workers and bring them in and actually be a part of our team, right? So, uh, and that's a big part of the, the training that I do for other lawyers. I recommend services, even a, something as simple as a reception service. There are services now that can answer your phones for you so that you don't even have to take your calls and, um, you know, there's, there's many services, right? Some of them cater to law firms. I use one that, takes all of our calls. So we don't even really answer the phone that much. We let it go to the reception service. Even if our virtual assistant can't answer the call, the reception service is a backup and it's 24 seven. So it, you know, it, it's always available. So I think, you know, the and, and that you could almost consider, consider that as a virtual service as well, right? Because these are people that are not necessarily working uh, physically, well, they're not working physically in your law firm, but they're answering your calls on behalf of your firm. So I see those types of services becoming a lot more popular, um, as well as, you know, virtual staff that work uh, uniquely just for you, right? There's these virtual services that can offer you services, but they're offering the same services to many different law firms, right? Like re answering services, like accounting services, like, um, you know, so so many different things. I agree. I agree so much with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Nadine, thank you so much for everything that you've shared with us. Uh, this is going to be very helpful for our listeners. Uh, I do have one last thing before we go, which is because this is blasted on all social media, would you be so kind to let people know where they can find you and what you can do for them? Right. Okay. So if you need an immigration lawyer, then of course you can go to my website, which is heightsimmigrationlaw.com. If you're interested in uh, immigration coaching, I have a website for that, which is tiplawyers.com. So like tiplawyers.com. And the TIP, as I mentioned before, stands for Technology for Immigration Practitioners, because that's my Facebook group as well. So that's how you can reach me. Well, thank you very much for sharing all of that information, Nadine. It's going to be helpful for everybody that's out there. I know I'm going to be joining your group, and I hope to have you as a return guest in the future. I'd like to know where your law firm is at in about a year. So Yeah, that would be exciting. Okay, thank you so much, Joe. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you, too. Well, all guys, right. see you next time on another episode.